The jaws of the demons is a tough place to be at the moment. Leon Cameron just lived that experience on Saturday night. Leon, uh, welcome to Coaches Night. Great to have you back on 360. G'day, Jared, Robbo and Scotty. And Chris Scott straight hey, from the G to the desk. Uh, welcome, Chris. Thanks, Jared. Hey, guys. A bit frazzled? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Always am post-game irrespective of the result. A little more stressful uh, than most games, that one, with the ebbs and flows, but I'm here. So what, yeah, what, so what is going through your head? I'm trying to read this talk footy. You've had a whole game, you've had a press conference, you haven't spoken to the players. I presume you haven't. No, I tend not to. Yeah. Uh, Did you so, today? No, no, I didn't no. today. So, so some individuals, but um, my, my view through my whole coaching career has been um, probably I learnt a little bit from Lee Matthews, who did speak to us, but he was always conscious of not jumping to conclusions. I like to take the time that you've got post-game to make sure that what you say is accurate. So about, are you foggy now uh, about...? A little bit, you... but not... Yeah, not, not completely. There's always... What, what I know for sure is in 24 hours I'll be clearer. How clear... How do you approach that, Leon? So Saturday night to Monday night. How clear are you on, on what happened on Saturday night? Oh, look, it was probably pretty clear for us. I mean, um, you know, for, for the first half, we probably took it up to them. We knew we were probably two or three goals behind at half time. We had, uh, you know, given a fair bit. We are winning a number of indicators, but then in the third quarter, we just couldn't go with them in terms of their, their run, their gut run, their ball movement. And every time we misused the ball or turned it over, they punished us. And by three-quarter time, you know, 30 minutes, you're, you're 10 goals down. And we think, where did that go? I was proud that we fought out the last quarter, but by the time you get two days on and assess it today, the same story's just come up now. Is it an emergency? When you look at a game like that, and I watched the game, Leon, it, it dawned on me halfway through the third quarter that you guys are a couple of years away, and Melbourne, uh, several years in, in, in front of that, they built their team over five, six, seven years, and they've got it, as I think you said in the, pre in the post match, they've got a humming team. Do you speak to your players about the fact that you have to work hard, work hard to get to that level that Melbourne are at at the moment? Yeah, we did. I mean, very briefly after the game. I'm, Scotty's right. Sometimes you've got to be prepared just not to say as much after the game, but then clearly elaborated today in the review. And we touched on that. And, um, you know, we're 12 or 13 players different from our grand final side a few years ago. So... We're a different team. We're rebuilding in a number of areas but um, and evolving as a footy club. But we did acknowledge Melbourne. We actually sat down and watched 16 of their goals that they kicked and how they produced them um, because we wanted to learn. We want to try to get better as quick as we can. As, as disappointing as we were in that third quarter, you know, we want our 44 players walking away from a review knowing that's what it takes to become a really, really good premiership team and that's where they are at the moment. No disrespect here, Leon, but does performances like that does that does that unfairly add negativity about and, and a bit of consternation about your future, or is it you don't even think about that? You've just got to deal with the issues at hand while everyone else in football says, "Ah, oh, Leon's gone, Leon's gone," without sort of realising where the team is right now. Oh, look, no doubt. I, I mean, my job is to deal with what's right in front of me. That's St Kilda in the, in the next three or four weeks. We understand, you know, we're going to be under a lot of scrutiny in the coach because of where, you know, the situation sits. Um, so that's there. Um, if we don't acknowledge it, Robbo, then, um, you know, we're kidding ourselves. But, you know, I'm lucky that I have, you know, some really good assistants that refocus me in on the job and make sure that, you know, we're looking forward and not backwards or worrying about external noise. That's always going to be there. Um, I've had it when we've been in finals, I've had it when we've sort of been sitting outside the eight and we're expected to win. And now we're in a different stage of our footy club where, you know, we're evolving as a, as a new club. We've got a new, new ruck set up, we've got a new forward line, we've got a, a new back line. But it is what it is and you deal with it and uh, you move on. You acknowledge that Melbourne were too good for us on, on Saturday night and, uh, and you, you work on where you think you can you make some gains this Friday night against St Kilda. Can I just ask you one more about your future, Leon? I'm... We've all seen you play football and a few of us, you've been on our show many, many times. You're a fighter. You can't be in the game as long as you are without being a fighter. Do you want to coach the Giants beyond this year? Oh, it's a really good question. Um, I mean, I've been at the club for 10 years, um, Jared, and um, you know, I've been involved for 34 years, which is a long time. And uh, I think the sensible decision at the end of the year is to make that. Um, 
you know, the club's got to be happy with the next coach, whether that's me or whoever that may be. You know, it's an appointment for the next three or four years because, you know, as I said, I've been been here for 10 years. But equally, I love coaching at the moment. But but I'm, I'm not silly either, Robbo. I mean, I know where it sits. Um, we're one and four. I'm a realist. Um, I need to coach really, really well over the next 17 games. And um, if I can do that, which I'm really confident I can, then we have a really good decision to make at the end of the year. Yeah, so I was interested in that part of it, Leon, is how do you win the job in a year where you are evolving? And the club would have known. This is eyes wide open. I, I, you don't want to be one and four, but it was eyes wide open that this is an evolving year rather than a year where you're rushing the top. How do you actually win the job? Oh, I think it's a number of things, Robbo, and that's in, internal. You look at, I mean, clearly win-loss. I mean, what's sitting here bragging about our one and four start. I mean, win-loss will be there, but equally style of play, other things we think we've got right, contested stuff, clearance stuff, we're probably heading in the right track, but we probably haven't got our ball movement. It'll be a number of things as well. But equally, you want to know you've still got the players as well, so there'll be a number of things we'll look at at the end of the year. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm confident over these next 17 weeks that I can produce and our club can produce some really, really good results. We're going to have some ups and downs. Look, we've already had that. But we look forward to Friday night against the Saints and, um, you know, that's right in front of our noses in about four nights' time. At three-quarter time, Chris, did you feel like you had the game wrestled to where you would have liked it? Yeah, given the first half of the first quarter in particular, it was a strong position to be in. We thought, you know, the middle part of the game was under our control and being played a little bit more the way that, that we intended. Um, but unfortunately, the pattern throughout the whole game was that when we had the... Ascendancy, we really didn't put them away, uh, and and they they took their chances. So, I said post game that it shouldn't take sound like it's taking anything away from them because good players take their chances. And you know, Bruce kicking that one late, he's always, always going to kick it. He's a good player. We missed a couple of long shots. Goes up the other end. You know, after dominating the inside fifties, and Gunston kicks one from outside fifty. It was. Was that sort of game for us, unfortunately? So, so, so pre-game, and, and take us into your, into, your, into, your, into your box, can you, with the players. Yeah. Is it all about how you want to play? Or are you talking to your players about Hawthorne in the sense like we all were? Did you see them at training? It was, you know, mouth guard kind of stuff, fight and wrestling. So they're going to come out hard. Do you talk about how you expect them to come out? Is that is that mentioned? And then, so you know, this might be really old-fashioned, but... Be ready, be ready, and then, in fact, they sort of jumped. They went bang, bang, bang and kicked three goals in whatever. Did you yeah. talk about that sort of stuff or not? Oh, not, not in the way you've described. So how, do you, how did you so, then? Yeah, so I'll sort of walk you through it a little bit. We take the attitude that, especially, and you don't need much evidence now, you just watch the games of footy uh, through the first four rounds, and when you're playing Monday, you see a lot of footy Thursday, Friday, yeah. the Saturday games. Look at the Port Carlton game. If a team has it these days, if a team has the game played the way they want it to be played and they get the momentum, they're hard to stop. It doesn't matter yeah. who they are. So you, you don't need to sell that story to the players. They can see it for themselves. Uh, last week was a disappointing game for um, Hawthorne. So you tend to come back and you know, bring Shields back and a bit more experience, focus on mm. the contested ball, which they did really well. But for us, most of it is preparing the players for the way teams play. So we've played against Hawthorne for a long period of time where you just know exactly how they play. It's just hard to beat. This is a different iteration and they need to be ready for the way um, Hawthorne have, have shifted. And you know, even in their early games, you know, the Port game's a good example. You look at the stat sheet after the game, there's no way they should have won that game. Mm. But they're so efficient going forward at the moment. And again, like... Gunst why is that? Why, why? How, how does the team suddenly become efficient going forward is it is it luck or is it is it the way well this it... is really simplistic really simplistic but gunston missed a whole lot of footy yep. um but sicily missed a whole lot of footy um you know and, and and bruce sort of hasn't been himself um the way he looks to be now so get the ball in those guys hands and, and good things happen so that's not taking away from their system because clearly there's a lot of good things that are that are happening, happening but yeah well, we sort of look at it and say isolate those guys with class um, and we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Can I have one more? Three-quarter time, as Jared asked. So after the game, you saw what happened. You got cleaned up a bit in the contested ball mm. and clearances. And a Hawthorne team, they've got good players. O'Meara and Mitchell, they took, took control. Do you, are you angry about that? Do you, do you say to your players, hey, 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 that, that, that is unacceptable? Or do you say, oh, well, it's round five? Let's just live and learn and try and get better. How, how do you handle a quarter like that? 
Well, we don't blame them. The, the things we don't do are easier. We don't um, scream and yell at them, hey, you didn't try hard enough, because we just work from the basis that that effort's always going to be there. I hate talking about effort. I think it's one of the most overrated things in the game. But Ross Lyon's a good friend now, um, and he reckons talking about effort's crucial. So I'm not saying that I'm right. Um, there's a strong possibility he's right. I just think it's implied. So um, we, we talk about the system a little bit more. But the number of times at three-quarter time at the MCG, I've said to the players, six points down, MCG, Friday night, doesn't get much better than this. So you are kind of imploring them to um, find. just find something. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought in the last quarter, and again, I know more in 24 hours, but I thought we had our chances, we just didn't take them. Leon, as, as we look toward Friday night, so Toby Green returns, how big a price has the team paid for that action, losing a semi-final and then starting the next year one and four? Oh, look, yeah, a bit disappointing. I mean, missing the first five rounds is is not ideal. And, um, I mean, clearly he's a huge barometer for our you know, team, especially in our front half where, you know, we've got so many injuries there. And, um, you know, we've had a fair bit of inconsistency in that part of the ground. But um, it's over now. We look forward to Friday night. Um, yeah, he'll come in. Um, and, um, you know, the hard thing is he hasn't had any footy. But, you know, we, we rate him so highly that we think over the next couple of weeks that he'll get going and, um, and clearly slot back into our forward line. But, um, I mean, it's disappointing because, you know, we're a better team when he's out in the field than, than off it. So how determined do you suspect he is to, to make amends to the collective? Yeah, look, I mean, two parts. I think he, he just he wants to do, let his football do the talking, um, which clearly he does most of the time, and, and making sure that, um, you know, he's just eyes fixed on, you know, being that team player and, and staying out in the ground. And, uh, you know, uh, we know some of the challenges he's had. He does a lot of work off-field on that. He puts his hand up. Um, I'm really confident. Clearly he's, you know, one of those players you just love having in your side, and, you know, I back him every day of the week. Um, you know, as I said, straight after last year, it was disappointing to lose him and he had to put his hand up. But we've moved on now and Friday night's uh, on us in four nights. The bigger issues in the game with our coaches coming next, Leon Cameron and Chris Scott here. We'll ask about the umpire respect piece and what the understanding of players are right now. And the benchmark is really obvious. So uh, the study of 16 of their goals is part of the review from the team who just confronted them. Leon, without torturing the point, just when you review the 16 Melbourne goals, is that standard as good as we've had at the top level in the comp for a while? Oh, especially in the third quarter. Um, I mean, clearly there was some, you know, for all our dominance in the first quarter, we scored five points and they went down and scored four really good goals. I mean, they're in sync, their skills are really good, they've got great connection. Um, there was a lot of, you know, really good pieces of play and you know, in part we contributed because, um, you know, our ball use wasn't great and then we didn't defend the ground. But on the other part, they are, they're in sync and they're playing some really good footy and it, it has been the best we've seen this year thus far. The weekend's book ended by the umpire respect piece and what constitutes dissent. So abuse, I think we're all really clear on abuse. What have you been told dissent is, Chris? Well, I think the most um, important cue for the players is dissent's going to be interpreted as what you can see on the TV screen and, and therefore what the young kids can see when they're playing junior footy. So you, you can say something really nice if it looks like it's aggressive or it looks like it's demonstrative, the word they like, um, then, then you make yourself vulnerable. And I think this is a pattern that happens every time there's a rule tweak. There's a little bit of an overcorrection and if you look at it in isolation, you say, well, that's not exactly what we intended. But if we go a little bit too far to make a behaviour change, then we're going to accept it. I think everyone knew that. But, uh, so, would you have thought that was... On what you'd been told, would you have thought that would be 50? No. No, but you open yourself one? up to it. Yep. So, Clayton Oliver there, would you have thought that that was going to be 50? Yep. Yep. So, the next two are not paid as 50, so multiple sons here. Would you have thought that would be dissent? Uh, yeah, but it might have been a push in the back as well. So we're going to go through every <laughs> yes. single push in the back and say, look, I don't, I don't think that's fair. So, um, look, I understand the, the frustration with it, but it's just on us to, to get with the, with the program. And again, the... Um, well, Tommy's been the poster boy for a lot of things this year, hasn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, it, yeah, I won't go into that, but the, uh, I think it's been explained 
well enough for us to understand. The behaviour change is the hard part. So, you know, I think he showed a little bit earlier. Like some of the players realising before, just in time to... Now, that's the scent. <laughs> massage their hair. If, yeah, if your hair hands up, yeah. that's the But this will, this will find its right place. I just think it's similar to... Well, the hands in the back's a good, a good one. Like, how hard is that for key forwards who have played their whole career, knowing you can do that, to all of a sudden I can't? And then there was this huge overcorrection and it finds its right place. Leon, where are you with the idea of dissent? Well, I think Scotty summed it up pretty well. I mean, uh, it's just going to take... It's just going to take a while. The behaviour change, and uh, we talk about it, and, you know, I, I heard you two, uh, Jared and Robbo, sort of debating it before I came on. I mean... Yeah, it's very, very hard in action, in motion, to then uh, disagree with what's happened out there and not raise your arms or have that demonstrative look or um, looking at the umpire and not a, in a right way. That's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, and I think it's probably by about mid-year it probably evens itself out. Rest assured, though, I think every player at every list understands the rules and we're absolutely trying our best to make sure that we don't give away a 50 and we are understanding that the respect for the umpires has to go to a new level because of you know what we've been told and and what our role we play in it as AFL club how does the coach deal with the situation Scotty of like Matthew Nix at Adelaide losing your captain and your and your sort of sole player at, at this stage of the year and you and you've got a developing team how, how challenging would that be no it's Almost as bad as it gets when I think Rory's 32, yeah, roughly. 32. So, you know, towards the end of his career, possibly. Uh, the, my only thought goes to trying to sort of channel his experience um, to help the younger players. Uh, I, I don't know Rory a little bit enough to know that I think he'd be an outstanding coach or he's got some options to go further in mm. footy. So even for him reframing this as an opportunity to sort of get some sort of on-the-job experience in a slightly different role, but... Uh, that's cold comfort right at the moment. How, how that's sort of a competition-wide one, Leon, a, a player who's so admired uh, and has been for, for such a long period of time to, to learn it's an ACL so late in the day for him. Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, by, by, from looking from the outside in, he's, he's the spirit of the footy club. I mean, we had uh, Callum Ward go down at 29. Um, and, um, you know, it rocked our place. Um, we got up on the day, but then the week after we were shot and, um, and um, we took, took a little, a few weeks to find our feet. You know, we went on and lucky enough to play in a grand final that year. But Callum Ward was inspirational in helping our young mids and being in the coach's box every week and, and using his experience around that. But 32 years old and right at the back end of your career in terms of playing, it's a really hard one to deal with. Yeah. Um... And for him, Chris, like 32, we keep saying it. So he said all the right mm. things. Mm. It'd, be a, it'd be a confronting few days, though, wouldn't it, do you think, behind the scenes? Just to go, oh, have I got the capacity to get back at 33? Well, I, I draw the analogy between talking to the players straight after a bad loss and making an emotional decision uh, at, at the wrong time. Uh, he doesn't need my counsel, but just take a breath, Rory. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's got no choice, but... He's going to miss the year and he's got plenty of time to, to make that decision and work out whether he's mentally up for it because I suspect he'll be physically up for it. It's just... But then there's also... I just... You know, I do know him well enough to know that he'll be thinking, what's the right thing for the club here? Mm. You know, and... I reckon he deserves the opportunity to be a bit selfish for six months before he makes the call. Yep. Chris, thanks for coming straight from the thanks ground. Thanks so Chris. And Leon, thanks, thanks for Leon. joining us. Good luck with what's to come. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Leon Cameron and Chris Scott with us on Coaches Night. Our players tomorrow night, Marcus Bontempelli and Jack Rebolts here together. So the Tigers are living the yo-yo that Jack spoke about last week. Marcus Bontempelli, the dogs, said a few things right in their good Friday encounter.